Our visit to the NHRA Museum includes a look at the career of one of the most colorful and imaginative personalities of drag racing's early days, TV Tommy Ivo. Ivo's celebrity brought attention to drag racing. He was a showman and a self-promoter, and it could be said that Ivo was drag racing's first professional. His legacy includes championships and record-breaking runs. Tommy is assured a place in drag racing's Valhalla. I was the first to run into the eights on gasoline. I was the first to run 170, 180 on gasoline. This is when it was restricted to gasoline. Then we were the first to run in the sevens on fuel, the first to run in the fives on fuel, the first to run 190 on fuel. And I might have missed something there, but I think that pretty well covers it. He was the sport's first full-time touring pro, and over his 30-year career, campaigned over 36 different cars. I was the first to go on the road. In fact, they've kind of called me the first professional. I started out with a single-engine dragster, went to a twin, to a four. Of course, to the fuel car, sat behind the motor, in front of the motor. I had funny cars. I had a jet car. In 30 years, I kind of run the gamut. And of course, I was always looking for something new and different. Tommy's first hot cars were Buicks. The TV Tommy moniker is due to his prolific film and television acting career. It started when he was seven and continued through his 20s, during which he was featured in hundreds of productions. Tommy and his cars were stars in teenage exploitation movies. In this classic, Drag Strip Girl, he appeared with his first purpose-built rod, a 1927 Ford Bucket T pickup. What are my chances tomorrow, Rick? Beat him, and I think you got it. The way it looks to me, the distance run will be the deciding factor. 100 miles at top speed's a lot of traveling. What do you think Jim's wagon will do? I don't know. He's made a point of not letting me know. Today, that same bucket tea is on display at the NHRA Museum. Well, it's really gratifying to see the thing back here in the museum, of course, just as it was when I first built it, because I built it when I was 19 years old. It had a Buick engine in it, and of course, we bored and stroked it. The car itself is kind of unique because it's a steel car. It has a reversed suicide front end. They used to call them a suicide front end because they'd all mount up on a little perch right in front of the motor. Tony Nancy has done all of my upholstery. In fact, one of his cars is right over here to the side in the museum. Now, the paint, they didn't come out quite yet with the candy apples. I was just about a year ahead of myself, so we painted it Tahitian red, which was a stock Buick color at the time. And instead of just putting a square window or a round or what have you in the back of it, I put a little half moon because with that big tall top on it, it kind of looked like an outhouse to me. Well, the T-Roadster...